out to them, Hannah. Please welcome Cameron Conaway. Jack Johnson guy is still here. They hear they peace out. Thank you. That rhythm like infected my bones. I'm all for that. That's cool. Um, so what I'm going to read is a, a collection of poems from the juvenile detention center that I wrote. Um, I learned there that I had a voice through poetry, but these 12, 13, 14 year old young women didn't have a voice and were judged very harshly based on past decisions that they had made. Um, and if you look beyond them, and I had a chance to look beyond them and hear their stories, and you know, how does a 10 year old deal with something like uh, a coroner coming to her door showing her a picture of her mom in a body bag or of her dad hanging from a tree? Um, these types of things change people in unimaginable ways, and so a lot of times these young women would, would join gangs in the area just to have a family because they didn't have anything else. Um, so I knew I wanted to somehow capture their voices, but, but also uh, tap into my own experiences with pain too. Um, so the manuscript uh, grew from that experience, and it, there's four different uh, juvenile offenders that I, that I speak through, I, four different voices. And at Pima County Juvenile Detention Center, there's four different levels. So uh, a lot of the girls, when they just come in, they're detoxing, they're at level one. And there's a, there's a big protocol they go through to advance to level two, level three, level four. And because they're detoxing, and a lot of them are just wild when they come in with, with anger or drugs, uh, I wanted to somehow represent that on the page. So at the beginning, a lot of the poems are, are very controlled, either with punctuation or with style, like a sonnet. And as the manuscript progresses, there's less and less, um, but there's more and more punctuation um, as a way to sort of control and, and exhibit how they're being controlled as they're there. Um, so a lot of what I did is on, the, is on the page, but I hope I can bring some stage presence, too. Uh, so I had a little intro that I was supposed to read, but I, let's not do that. Um, I know my fiance Maggie loves the uh, loves the title of this book, and I know you'll know what I'm talking about. But, uh, so the first, the intro poem to the manuscript is called Stack. Nothing superlative or enchanting should be easily accessible. Wallace Stegner, where the bluebird sings to the lemonade springs. Numbers and bars in a chart can't speak like black numbers on bleach uniforms on human bodies, or like the bars that house. Three or four can't speak like a forehead crease, nor can a bar chart chart a scar story. They speak to some, though, those that won't listen to the dilated pupils of eyes, to the deflated pupils in their community, walking their streets, sharing the same blue or gray or black skies. The next poem is from the uh, is from Gracie Ella, and she is uh, she's who exhibits level one. So she just got in here, okay. and a lot of the book also is a dialogue with me as teacher. So the girls, as the longer that they're in there, they start to become more calm, like more uh, confident and comfortable with with contemplation. Whereas as soon as they get in there, it's like it wasn't me, it wasn't me. But then, like, they're there for four weeks, and they're like, ah, oh, yeah, I screwed up. It kind of was me. Um, so I wanted to show that on the page, too. But, um, so this is Graciella in an interaction with me. Graciella, one. This other story always makes me laugh now, so here goes. Pennsylvania winter, I'm talking snow everywhere. Sister throwing up in an ALF garbage can. Mom's mascara tears drip drop because Penelec turned the heat off. Two guards support her weight guide her past the 20 circled chairs and into a cell. Two girls call out, Graciella, hey Graciella. No response. Hand raised. Yes? Well, what about your dad? Been gone eight years at this point. 
So they put this metal lock the size of a cowboy hat over the heating unit so you can't get to it. For real? Shit. Yep, that's how they do it. It's like the, this boot they put on cars if you ever saw someone have too many unpaid fines. But anyway, did you know it's a felony to take that thing off the heating unit? Really? Did you? With a hammer from her cell. In the mirror, I stood alive to brush my teeth. I cried. The mirror drip ran. Three times her knuckles knocked steel. Settled in sink, I turned the water on to rinse it down to cut the mirror, made it faster, alive, made it leap from the sink to my neck, to my neck, crawled step by step, centipede the ceiling, reached the light, the wine hook fixed itself, lifted its feet off pebble floor, air, swallow, off, pillow, fucking pills. Um, and all these poems, um, there's sections that are italicized, and that's me, that's me interacting with uh, the speaker. So... This is, that was poem one of Gracie Ella, this is eight, so she's progressed. Eight. Is there hope? What I mean is, tell me if you think there is something be- Yeah, shit, I hope for hope. Give me a minute. Yeah, so I know there's hope, because when I blow my nose, I see black butterflies. You ever see black butterflies? Me neither. Another one of God's plans, you know, telling black people they'll never be free. I saved that tissue, though. Want to see it? Yeah, me neither. Gives me hope, though. God may have a plan for me, but I have one for him. Now you want to know what I do in here, I don't know, a couple times a week? When y'all come and teach us poetry and we get pencils, I break out the lead. Hide it in the Velcro of my sandals, see here, and I snort it. Not for real though, you know, just a little bit, because I swallowed once at court and coughed while they were yapping about quick pro quo. I swear their orange juice tasted like I was drinking silverware. But I still snort, just a little so it's in my nose right. Then I'll blow to make new butterflies. Fuck, there's hope. Yeah, sometimes you got to make it though. Sometimes it'll get down stuck in your throat and hurt. Uh, this is level two. This is the speaker in level two. Her name's Eva. She's talking to me in this in this poem. Those two moves you show, triangle choke, right? And go go, go go plata. They look cool and all, but I ain't never gonna pull that off in the streets, because streets have uncountable gravel. You have a mat. Streets have knives. You have two gloves. Streets have eyes from all sides. You have one pair. And besides, if I tried it, that gravel would stick in my back, make me bleed. And it'd burn like busted heat in the shower. It'd probably leave scars or something. And people would ask how it happened, or if I was born that way, or if I was whipped at home. I mean, I wouldn't feel sexy. Scars are cool on the front, you know? But back scars mean you done had it handed to you. Front scars mean you done took it looking. I get pissed off reading this poetry, man. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, I chill out. It's like Christmas and stuff. There was a couple uh, poems in here where I would hide under the table. Out. One, one of the girls that I really worked with and, and connected with um, was in the house and saw her dad shoot herself or shoot himself in the head. Um, <laughs> And the way she explained it was like she was hiding in the cupboards and was kind of like peering out through the door. So I like got in the cupboards or got under a chair and like, what would it be like if I had to watch my parents shoot themselves? Um, talk about like empathy, I guess. You know? um, this is Christmassy. I have a Christmas poem. I didn't plan this. It's, a, it's got a twist to it though. Okay, so this is Eva again too. Eva, do you see the world differently because of your time in here? I made a song and memorized it. Shh. Can you come closer? Of course. Okay. Start, starts bobbing head. I see the world as even and odd. 32 to chow hall, 16 to basketball, 11 to library, 8 maids of fucking, 5 golden rings, 4 from door to window, 3 from door to pee, 2 from bed to door, and a cartridge and a Glock 23. <laughs> <laughs> Time. Are we okay? Time. Yeah, you're cool, man. No, whatever feels good. Tell us more. Same, same uh, character. Last Friday, you asked how our past shaped us. I've been thinking, can you come closer? One thing I took, stole, when mom kicked me out while she was on parole was three photo albums. Now, she don't know I hated her. She hated me, but I wanted those memories. I got pictures in my pocket. Cute, right? See the sequins on my socks? On the streets, when I'd be touching cats, I'd tape a knife to those same socks. 
with part of the handle out so I could take a stand and demand to get licked. This one on the high chair. Mom said Big Brother would always put the pacifier back in my mouth when I spit it out. Can you come a little closer? I deep throat dick with these same lips. God damn it, motherfuckers never paid up. I just, when you told us to think, other girls said they'd done lived hard lives. They tougher now than then. None said if they better or not. I'm not better, man. I don't know what you wanted from the assignment, but I sure as hell ain't better. Maybe just thinking makes me feel like I'm not better. Is that what you wanted? What I wanted. What she gave. Reflection, not reflect, shun.